Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I want to say a big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in. All righty. Well, I looked at all the comments on that last video in the fishing trip and doing the little giveaway, and I came up with a winner. You're a winner. After looking through the comments, and there were some really good ones on there, really good stories and stuff, just hard to choose. But uh, this one hit me because it was kind of like my story. So, the fella says, my favorite outboard is a 1955 5.5 Johnson. He said it was given to me in 1975 by my uncle. And he said then one of my other uncles come along and help me tune it up and get it going and everything. And he said it's, it's my favorite outboard. Um, and he said, both of those uncles have since passed away. He said, but to him, the little outboard brings back the memories, and, the, and it's the memories that count. And that is a little bit along the lines of my own um, introduction to outboards way back then. So, big shout out and congratulations to Matt Mills from the beautiful state of Georgia. So, you are the winner, and we're going to get you pretty t-shirt like this and a fancy fancy ball cap from the fine folks at super clean on the way out to you and uh, we want to thank them for doing that and also what I'm going to need is right down below Matt Mills you're going to see down below hit the show more and you'll see my email address and you send me your P.O. box or address, wherever you would like it sent to, and then also what size you would like. And I'll get that out to you. Now, don't fret. Don't be like that old porch frog. Don't fret. I got more stuff to give away, and I'm gone. Look at that. Beautiful. Alaska brown bear mug. It's even brown in the inside. And it's got some statistics on here about the 49th state. It's got a pretty brown bear grizz. I'm going to be giving that to somebody. And then, right here from the hometown, we got a beverage container. That's what this is. It's a beverage container. And it's got the pretty Kodiak Alaska Brown Bear on there. And then I got some more t-shirts uh, that I, I'm going to get. So we'll be doing some more giveaways. So don't you be fretting. Don't be like that old porch weather frog out there who's miserable today because it's foggy and rainy and yucky. Sure is. Even got a ship anchored out right back. Right out there, a fishing boat. Big one. And he keeps sounding the fog signal. Boop. He's required to by law, you understand us. So that's what he's doing. In this particular video here, we're just going to do a hodgepodge of outboard funds, maybe throw in some other things. I don't know, I don't know. But we got a video for sure, so let's get to it. Pretty nice boat, huh? Nice Yamaha. Was that 70? Yeah, nice four stroker Yami 70 with a 15 horsepower Yamaha kicker. 
um, beautiful welded skiff, um, self bailing. Got a nice little house they added on to it. And uh, but what really jumps out is look at that trailer. He blew the uh, the jack out. That's why I had to do the uh, the little bulldozer thing. But uh, isn't that pretty? And this was built by high school students. They did a good job. And another thing I like, um, they took the thought processes to... <laughs> I see so many uh, cabins on these welded... Uh, skiffs around here that they build and like I said high school students in the welding shop built this one and the trailer and everything and uh, but I like the way they put that little wheelhouse off to one side so you can walk around and then they had enough room over there where he can pull crab pots with that beautiful davit that they made um, yep so this was built um, not too far away from here in a little village called King Cove. And uh, not much of a population there. I don't know the numbers, but a couple thousand at best. And uh, it's just a fishing village. And the high school welding team put all this together. And, then the owner who brings it to me about every year to get it tuned up he won it on a bid and i don't know what he paid for it but uh very well made tough skiff you could run that thing right up on the beach no problem i mean just good stuff okay so what i'm fixing to go over now is the primer system on uh these 90 late 80s up through uh, the 90s, Johnson, Evan Rude, 30, probably 20, 30, 35, that series, um, that had the manual primer with the little hoses would go every which are well. So, I want to give a shout out to Jeffrey Wicker in Toledo, Ohio, who wrote and asked me to go over this. He said, I thought mine had a T, the one you had didn't have a T. Does it have a T? Does it don't have a T? The manual don't explain what the T. So, we're going to dive into these and see if we can't figure out. I just happen to have both models, so I hopefully can uh, film it good enough where you can see where things go. And uh, I've had a couple requests for this, so let's get on that. Okay, I've had a couple folks ask me about this 98 Johnson here, the uh, manual primer hose routing um, situation. So let's look, let's look. Okay, there's the primer. And you can see you've got this hose here that sticks the furthest away from the actual choke knob. Okay, so you've got it, and it runs right around to the bowl. Then you've got the hose, the small hose. It runs from the little blue nipple, sometimes it's white, and it runs around up. to the top of the carburetor, right here. This hose runs from here, at the bottom of the intake there, comes up behind the recoil starter bracket, behind all this, behind the fuel pump, and there's a nipple right here on the intake bypass that it goes to. So it runs from there, to that lower intake nipple. And there's no T in this one because of that. All right? 
and that T would normally be right here and run a line to that lower intake nipple and then up to here. But because this one has the bossing behind the fuel pump, that hose runs from there to this lower intake nipple. Whereas on the on this one there is no T, it comes straight off the primer body itself and straight up to the top of the plastic carburetor. And that's on the 98 that I'm showing you here. Okay, now here's another setup for this primer. This is on an earlier model. Um, this is on a 89 and earlier, I believe, to a certain point. But this is the one that has the T. I hope you can see it right there. I got sun glaring on me, so I can't really see too good. But here's the hose that's the furthest away from the, the cowling pan in the front, or the choke knob, or the primer knob. The bigger of the two, it comes around, just like the other one, to the bowl. Okay. Now here's your T. It comes off the little one, the littlest nipple. It comes here, and then there's a T here. And one goes from the center of the T to the bottom of the intake here. Hopefully you can see it right there. It runs straight from that center T of the T to the intake. Then it branches off there, comes around to the top of the carb here. And this one doesn't have a plastic top carb, it has the aluminum carb, so it shoots it right down the back of the throat into the intake. So that's the T configuration that a couple people have asked about. So the bigger hose straight to the carb bowl, to the front of the carb bowl. From the fuel pump it comes, the main fuel feed hose from the fuel pump comes to the back of the bowl and goes straight into the carburetor, fills the bowl. Then the small hose from the closest nipple to the knob or the front of the cow pan comes about an inch and a half, then it tees and it goes right to the intake. Then from the, the little hose continues on and goes to the back of the carburetor. And the reason why is because on the other model, the carburetor, I mean the uh, hose on the intake side here, where the fuel pump mounts to the intake bypass, there's a nipple here. And that nipple runs, I mean that hose runs from a nipple right here down in here, behind the fuel pump, it runs a hose straight to where this one is, to the front side of the intake. All right, well this one runs it straight from this T here and does not have that hose coming from the intake up by the fuel pump to this nipple on the intake. It has it coming off this T. And that's for, this one I believe is an 89 model. So there's, there's the two setups, two different carburetors, two different manual primer setups. I'm right out here behind the house. And we got big beautiful full moon. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's almost like from the top of them trees there, there's um, like a blue and then there's like a violet color stretching the whole way there. Just really pretty. And we got some stellar sea lions swimming out to Hannon Rocks. If you're wondering what them ripples on the water are. But what a beautiful evening. 
way back over there you can see the snow cap mountains that's out toward Chiniac and it's just really pretty Its name, that tune. Your words, received by everyone. And should you fall, well, that's okay. You love the ones that you betray. Your words received by everyone. And should you fall, well, that's okay. You love the ones that you betray. Name. That dude.
Yeah. I don't know if you can see them real good, but they look pretty good. Not dirt yet there, but look at that. They came out pretty nice. So we'll let her drain and dry. I'll flip it on it so the intake's up. Oh, sorry about that. So that she is straight up and down. <laughs> Let her dry. There comes some water. Okay, this is the uh, little seven and a half horse. Look at the uh, look at the salt blockage in this thing. Oops. And then here, 
little bit, little bit of blockage, so I'll get that cleaned out. Yeah. Now, don't that look a whole lot prettier with all that yuck cleaned out of there? Got the whole head all cleaned up, ready to go. I got the cylinders lightly honed around the crown. I got the pistonus. The pistonus, you understand us? I speak of the spires. I got them all cleaned up. So, as soon as I do a couple other things, I'm going to slap this head back on. I'll be back. Okay, I got the head all cleaned up. I got the part of the cylinder, the top part of the uh, cylinder all cleaned up. All the salt and everything out it. Lightly honed uh, the cylinders, mostly around the crowns where I saw a little staining. Cleaned up the gasket and everything, and I'm going to do a compression. Compressionist. This will be the bottom. Let's see what we get. We are on the zero mark. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, we've got. Uh, let's see, what do we got? 90, 95, 100, 105, about 107. That's what it looks like. It's just a little past the 105 mark, and that's on the bottom. Let's do compression on the top. And we are on the zero mark. We get, what do we get? We got 90, 95, 100, 105, probably about 108 on that one. 107, 108, 105 per cylinder. That'd be good. Well, now, where has all the time went? It sure does fly when you are having a good time. So, we dove inside a few outboards and uh, we got quite a bit to do yet on that little 7.5 Cody. It's such a little cutie. We got more to do on that one. We still got the Cabo Rapo. We still got the whole lower end. We got a lot to do. You understand. But this one's getting along. So. You know what that means. That means one more pack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.